Welcome to Real Chemistry. Today on the show, what we're going to do is we're going to find out the energy eigenvalues for our particle in the box wave functions. So if you did the particle in the box derivation, you saw that what you get at the end is a bunch of wave functions. And those wave functions are indexed by this letter n. So that means you really got an unlimited number of solutions. And what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the energies of all of those solutions. Now, how do we do that? We take the Hamiltonian, which is just our operator, which tells us the total energy of our system. And we apply it to the wave function with our Schrodinger equation that you see down here at the bottom. That's going to spit out the energy of our wave functions times the wave functions themselves. One thing to remember before we start is that the potential, this V of X, that second term in our Hamiltonian, is the potential inside the well. And remember, the potential inside the well is zero, and the walls are infinite. So you can imagine you've dug an infinitely deep well, and now you're dropping an electron in it, and that's basically what we're looking at. But importantly, since the potential inside the well is zero, that means our V of X and our Hamiltonian is equal to zero. So we're only gonna have to apply this first term when we calculate the energy of these eigenvalues. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here's our wave function. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna apply the Hamiltonian. Basically, I'm gonna write down the first half of the Schrodinger equation, and then later on, I'll show you how that connects to the second half. So we're gonna write the Hamiltonian times our wave function, and what we're gonna get for that is our negative h bar squared over 2n, the second derivative. Let's make that a little neater the second derivative times our wave function, which remember is square root of two over L sine n pi x over L. All right, remember we don't have to worry about the potential because the potential inside of our well is zero. So that's why the Hamiltonian becomes just that first term. Let's go ahead and stepwise take the derivative. So first we're gonna take the first derivative, h bar squared over two n, that's still there. Now we're just gonna have one derivative left after we take this derivative. Our constant up front, that's what used for normalization, sticks around. Now we want to take the derivative of sine, and the derivative of sine, recall, is cosine. So we get cosine. And then we still have the same n pi x over L inside that trig function. Now, n pi x over L is really just a constant times x. So when we apply the chain rule, we have to take the derivative of what's inside our sine, and it's just a constant times x. And whenever you take the derivative of a constant times x, you just get the constant. In this case, what's that constant? The constant times x here is the L, the n, and the pi. So we're going to get a factor of n pi over L when we apply our chain rule. All right, now let's apply the second derivative. So we're again going to have our negative h bar squared over 2n. Our derivative is going to disappear. Still have that constant. Now we're gonna be taking the derivative of cosine. The derivative of cosine, recall, is negative sine. So we're gonna get a negative sine here. Our argument in the cosine, or in the trig function, stays the same. And now we still have our n pi over L term from above, but once again, we apply the chain rule. And we apply the chain rule the second time, we're gonna get out the same factor of n pi over L, which means this is gonna be n squared pi squared over L squared. Boom. All right, let's collect some constants so we can see what we got here. We're gonna take these constants and we're gonna pull them out front. And we're gonna take this negative sign and we're also gonna pull it out front. When we do that, our negative signs are gonna cancel. We're gonna get h bar squared. And then we're gonna get the top guys from over here, n squared and pi squared. And that's all gonna be over our 2m times our l squared, which is the bottom of that term way there in the back. So now we've collected our constants. And that's all gonna be times square root of two over L sine n pi over X. Notice that's the same function we started with. What that tells us is that the particle in the box wave functions are an eigenfunction of our operator, in this case, the Hamiltonian. Remember that this is also equal to the second half of our Schrodinger equation, energy times psi X. So what we really have is here we have our psi and here we have our energy term. So our energy eigenvalues, there's a bunch of them indexed by the letter n. Remember the n can take on any positive value, that's a whole number from one to infinity. So we have h squared, n squared, pi squared over 2ml squared. And n can be equal to, not zero, but it starts at one, two, three, dot, 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 forever. 
So those are our energy eigenvalues. If we want to know the energy of any of our particle in the box wave functions, all we have to do now is plug in the n value. One last note here is remember that h bar is equal to h over 2 pi. What that means is sometimes you'll see these energy eigenvalues written where they'll substitute in the h over 2 pi and you guys won't use h bar. So some people use h bar, some people don't, but this is the energy eigenvalues written in terms of h instead of h bar. So we plug in now our h over 2 pi squared times n squared pi squared over 2ml squared. So basically all we did is we substituted our h bar for our h. What that's going to give us now is that the energy eigenvalues are going to be h squared, n squared, and now our pi's cancel, pi squared and pi squared. And then here we have a 2 squared, which is going to give us 4 times another 2. That's going to give us an 8 on bottom. And then we still have our n and we still have our l squared. So that's another way to write those energy eigenvalues. So two different ways to write the energy eigenvalues, either with h bar or without h bar. But they tell you the same thing, which is the energy of the wave functions for your particle in the box solutions. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Click that Real Chemistry icon down below and subscribe. You'll receive updates about all my new videos. Thanks for watching.